name is Gary Sear, and I am in the Flowtech Demo Lab. Today I'd like to show you how to enter the parameters for the HVAC quick setup in the ACH 580 variable frequency drive. One of the most important things for a VFD startup is the information on the motor nameplate. Um, you'll notice that there is a horsepower rating, a volts rating, an amps rating, and an RPM rating. This is a three horse motor. Um, it is dual voltage, so it's important to know what voltage that you're going to be utilizing and the rating voltage of the drive. Um, that will tell you which um, amperage that you're going to be using to program the drive to protect the motor. Um, and then the RPMs. So just for instance, we'll use 460 is going to be 4.2 amps. So we are going to enter 4.2 amps into the VFD to protect the motor. Now that you have obtained your motor data, we can enter the menu, the main menu, pressing this button and selecting primary settings and then selecting HVAC quick setup. The first parameter is primary start stop. This parameter is utilized to select what you would like to use for the start stop signal when you're in auto. If we go to edit, we have a choice of DI1, digital input, embedded field bus, or field bus adapter. The next parameter is primary reference. This is utilizing an analog input and that is where the speed signal will land. We can use AI1 directly, embedded field bus, or field bus adapter. AI1 scaling. This is where we can select whether we're going to use a voltage analog input or a milliamp analog input. Also, if we're going to utilize um, serial communication, such as embedded field bus or a field bus adapter. So there's the range. If we hit that arrow, we have 0 to 10 to choose from, 2 to 10 volts, 4 to 20 milliamps, 0 to 20 milliamps, or other. We can also scale that 0 to 10 volt signal uh, on the min and on the max. This is where you would change the max scaled frequency higher than if you needed to than 60, 60 hertz. This parameter is where we would select the use of start interlock one. This basically allows you to set up a digital input to utilize uh, for safety purposes, such as free stat, fire alarm, um, vibration switch. So there it is selected. So this is where you can change whether you utilize DI4 high, edit, and you can choose one of the other digital inputs. This is where you can select for run permissive signal. If you select this, this allows the drive to use a run enable when digital input two is high. You can't edit this to other digital inputs. This would typically be used for a damper end switch or an output contactor with an aux 
relay that would tell the drive that the contact is closed and allow it to operate at the appropriate time. Next parameter is minimum frequency. And this is typically um, edited to not go any lower than six hertz. It allows the motor to cool itself at that speed. Um, some motor manufacturers or pump manufacturers like even a higher minimum frequency to help protect the motor or pump. Acceleration time. This parameter is used to adjust the time it takes for the motor to reach max frequency from the initial start. Deacceleration time is the opposite and it is the time it will take for the drive to slow the motor down to zero speed from its fastest time. Stop mode is utilized and to edit between coast and ramp. If you're utilizing coast, the drive, when it receives a stop signal, allows the motor to freewheel until it stops. If you're using ramp, the drive slows the motor down to the speed set in the deacceleration time. Sometimes ramp is used in pump applications that utilize a check valve to keep the check from slamming. Motor nominal values. This is where we will enter the information that we obtained earlier from the motor nameplate. Select. Current. Push the right arrow. This is where we can adjust the motor amperage that we received from the motor nameplate. Press save. Scroll down. Speed is in RPMs and this is where we would adjust the RPMs if necessary. Up or down. save. Voltage. 460 is typical of most motors and does not need to be adjusted even though utility is around 480 volts. Frequency is also the same, 60 hertz. That does not need to be adjusted unless different on the motor nameplate. Asynchronous motors, that is typical of the HVAC industry and doesn't need to be adjusted unless it's different. Power, this only needs to be adjusted if different from on the motor nameplate. This is optional. This is also optional. When you get back to current, just go to the back button and scroll down. Date and time. Hit the right arrow to enter. Date can be edited here by pressing edit. Up and down arrows to adjust. Right arrow to go to day. Right arrow to go to year. Save. Scroll down to time. Time is edited the same way as date was. Edit here for how you want the date to be displayed. Date, day, month, year, month, day, year, year, month, day. Also here you can edit to whether you would like to see it in 24 hours or 12 hours. This you can edit to the daylight savings. We're in US, so that's fine. And the next daylight savings start date, the next daylight savings end date, and then whether or not you show the clock or not back. Scroll down to communication. 
communication, this parameter is where you'd set up or turn on um, the embedded field bus or whether you're using a field bus adapter. And now we are back to where we began. And then we can start the drive in hand to initiate the identification run. I'm going to go back to the main screen, press the hand button. The drive is performing a identification run. This gets the characteristics of the motor it is connected to. Once this is done, you'll have to press hand again to check rotation. If you check rotation and you find that it is going the wrong way, you can press off, go to menu, primary settings, go down to motor, go to phase order, press edit, and select UWV, save. This changes the phase order to make the motor go a different way so you don't have to open the cover and change it at the output. That completes the programming of the HVAC quick setup. Mm -hmm.